It's unfortunate but true that a terrible temptation when you're part of government is to succumb to the notion that we in Tallahassee can make all things better through government. It's so easy to see people facing challenges and think if we just had more government revenue, we could create a program to fix that. Or if the government would just impose more regulations, these bad things would never happen to good people. My friends, those sentiments may be well intended, but they are dangerous. Government cannot give everything to everybody, and it cannot prevent every calamity. The notion that government can somehow make everyone happy and healthy has led our federal government into the terrible experiment in government run amok that the voters of our state and our nation overwhelmingly rejected two weeks ago today. So during the next two years, I'm going to challenge you to ask a much harder question. Instead of asking what government can do to fix a problem or prevent a potential wrong when confronting the challenges facing our state, I challenge you to ask whether or not government should be involved at all. Or perhaps better yet, what can government stop doing that will allow greater freedom to our citizens? If someone had told those of us who were first elected in 2004 that by 2010 the federal government would be not only advocating but implementing the greatest expansion of government power since the New Deal, I would not have believed it. And yet that's exactly what we have seen. Government taking over banks and financial institutions, government taking over auto manufacturers and the production of durable goods, government socializing medicine, and government trampling the property rights of citizens and the sovereignty of states. Should it really be the role of government to require people to purchase a health insurance product they don't want, raise taxes to give that same product to others who can't afford it, and commandeer our state government and its resources to carry it out? Or should we work to limit government and empower the private sector by developing a clearly defined framework for providers in Florida to compete to meet the needs of our citizens and then hold them strictly accountable for their performance? Can it really be the proper role of government to arbitrarily come into a single state and unilaterally tell us that Florida must adhere to arbitrary, unscientific, and unachievable EPA standards? Or should we raise our voices in protest and defend our citizens' property rights and our state's sovereignty against this assault by the federal government. The threats to our liberties come not only from the federal government, but they can also be seen much closer to home. As an attorney and an officer of the court, I believe fervently in a judicial branch that is strong and independent and fully empowered and equipped to fulfill its constitutional duties. But for the judiciary to be independent, it must also be impartial and apolitical. It must respect the co-equal executive and legislative branches and it must protect their unambiguous constitutional powers, and it must practice the restraint that is built in to our federal and state constitutions. And yet over the past year, three times, we saw the work of a three-fifths supermajority of this legislative branch, the elected representatives of over 18 million Floridians demolished by five unelected justices of the Florida Supreme Court. This was done notwithstanding the fact that there is no express authority in the Florida Constitution for their doing so. And so I ask you, is it the role of the judicial branch to decide political questions and to endanger its reputation for impartiality by depriving the voters of the right to vote on important questions put forth by their elected representatives? Or should we make good on the oath we all just took to protect and defend Florida's Constitution, which expressly grants the legislature the unlimited right to place questions before the voters so that they, the people, may exercise their highest political right to choose whether or not to amend their Constitution? These are just a few examples of the threats to freedom and the cost that the loss of liberty have occasioned, but there are many others. And it's worth asking in all of these examples that I just cited, how and why did government expand so much and try to control so much economic activity or exercise those powers? While there is no one single answer, I believe that much of it stems from an arguably well-intentioned but fatally flawed assumption that government can and should protect people from themselves and that government can and should help people more than they can help themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, when government takes over private sector assets and controls private sector activity or denies people the right to vote because the government decides they might be confused, even if it does so, and probably especially if it does so in the name of protecting them, that is a destruction of freedom. That is the road to serfdom and economic bondage, not only for us, but for our children and their children after them. It is the road to ruin of healthy economy, and the foreclosure of a bright future for our state and our nation. Real freedom seeks equality in opportunity, not equality in outcome. 
To question the size and scope of government at every level could truly produce a new birth of freedom. Economic freedom based on the principle that people, not the government, can and should best determine how the fruits of their labor will be used. And making people, not the government, responsible for determining their own destinies for better or for worse. We shouldn't seek freedom merely for its own sake, although that is reason enough. We should seek freedom because it is the path to human industry, to returning strength to Florida's economy, and to people achieving their highest potential. Floridians want jobs. Jobs create opportunity, and they create self-respect, and they provide people a stake in their own future. And in order to get our economy moving again, we need to liberate capital, we need to inspire entrepreneurs, and we need to give people the opportunity to create jobs. Our mission over the next two years is to foster an economy that will allow the men and women of Florida to prosper. And our mission over the next two years is to bring sanity to the government's role in the private sector. Our mission is to ask ourselves whether every action we take will promote freedom and empower businesses to create jobs. You cannot regulate your way to prosperity, you cannot tax your way to wealth, and you cannot borrow your way out of debt. We cannot pass a bill to end this recession but we can create the freedom for the private sector to build a healthy and dynamic economy. Members, this is not a theoretical classroom discussion. Floridians need that new birth of freedom today. And a new birth of freedom will help encourage entrepreneurship, it will help create jobs, and it will help get Floridians back to work. And it is the economic freedom, and it is economic freedom that will unshackle our economy and once again paint a brighter future for the state of Florida. The road will not be easy, but our families and our children and our children's children will thank us. May God bless each of you. May God bless this house. May God bless the great state of Florida. Thank you.